Awesome. All righty. Uh, thanks, Doug. So, hey, everyone. I do want to thank all of you for joining us today. Um, I know a lot of us in the travel industry have a little bit of extra downtime right now. So uh, it's a great time to do some learning and prep. Um, and I find it really inspiring that you guys are here doing that with me and investing in your business's future. Um, so my goal here today is to inject a little bit of positivity into the world and give you some real tools and ideas about how to move forward during these unprecedented times. So Image Tours has been in business uh, since 1939, so we've definitely felt the effects of some of the other historical crises that have disrupted the travel industry, like 9-11 and the 2003 SARS outbreak and uh, Ebola, H1N1, the 2008, 2009 um, economic collapse. So we made it through all that, and we want to help you be successful through this. So this is what we've got in our coronavirus toolkit for you today. We're going to tell you a little bit about us and what we've been doing with this pandemic and about our plans going forward. We're going to talk about some news from our services in Europe and just some of the things that we've been researching for you guys. We're going to talk about what you can be doing right now for your business, which is kind of a three-step plan, maintain, focus, and prepare. And I'll get into a little bit more details about that later on. Um, and then we're going to talk about thinking ahead post-coronavirus. What should you start doing um, once we start to emerge from this crisis? Then if you are looking for advice from us, you're probably going to want to know a little bit about who we are. So um, we're a family-owned and operated tour company, and we specialize in escorted European tours. We were founded more than 80 years ago, like I said, 1939, um, in Amsterdam by Roloff Postma Sr., and the company was originally called Imhagi Tours, which is derived from a Dutch acronym, meaning the most satisfaction and best quality in travel for less money. And then Imhagi began providing services in the U.S. as a tour operator in 1960, when Roloff Postma Jr. came to Grand Rapids as an exchange student in his college years. And it was during that time that he organized the first uh, Heart of Europe Circle Tours for students and faculty and civic organizations in Michigan. And the company is now owned by Monique and Mike Kazmauskas, which uh, Monique is Royal Postman Jr.'s daughter. And then as our company was pursuing some new advertising strategies, Imhagi was changed to Image Tours in the hopes that the new name would be easier to remember for clients. And I bring that up because it's always important to be reevaluating your advertising strategies, and it's especially important during a crisis. And then in 1968, I mean 1986, Image Tours made the decision to no longer sell tours directly to clients, and instead all tours would be sold exclusively through travel agents. The goal here being to reinforce those positive relationships with our travel partners and eliminate any competition for business with you guys. And I mean, that's really why we're doing this webinar today because we need you guys. We cannot be successful unless our partners are, so we want to be there for you in any way that we can. All righty, so we're going to open up the toolkit here, and one of the big questions I keep getting asked by our partners uh, is, what are you guys doing? How are you guys responding to this pandemic? So I want to lay it all out here. Um, we've had about 92% of our clients take advantage of the opportunity that we offered to move their funds to a 21, 2021 departure at the same rate that they had for 2020 with no additional charges. Most of those clients chose to move to a departure date that was similar to the one that they booked in 2020. Um, and we were also able to work with our insurance provider uh, to move our clients' premiums to the new departure, which is definitely not something that's normally acceptable. So they've been extremely accommodating for our clients and we've really appreciated that. As far as our fall departures go, we're not sure what the fall of 2020 is going to look like, and nobody really is. But right now, we know that if we have people that want to travel, and we do still have some, um, and if they're ready to put down a final payment, and if it's reasonably possible to travel during that time, then we might actually have some small tours running this fall. Um, but we won't be accepting any new bookings for 2020. We're just going to keep the same people that are already booked. Additionally, one of the benefits that our partners have had with us during this pandemic is that we don't have long hold times, if there even is one at all. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've been on the phone with a partner and they're like, yep, I'm sitting on, on the other line on hold with this other company for like four hours. And that's just crazy to me because we're not a corporation where you talk to a different customer service rep every time you call. 
Um, you'll get real familiar with me if you call us a lot. <laughs> and uh, we're a small, dedicated team. And one of our main goals is to be consistently and readily available for you guys for our agents' questions. So if you wanted to call to just ask a quick question or a complicated question, we're here for that. Um, if you want to just chat or vent, or if you need advice about a certain reservation or a certain client, then we're here for that too. We want to make your lives easier because as I mentioned earlier, we only succeed when you guys succeed. So then another question I've been getting a lot is what are you hearing from Europe? What are things going to look like in Europe when travel reopens? Like I said, no one really knows what the future is going to hold, um, but we can tell you what the current restrictions are in the countries that we operate in and some things that we've been hearing from our services about what local life in Europe is looking like right now. But first, I think it's important to note that Delta, American, and United have all decided that they're going to resume several European routes between June and October. So that's definitely an indication that international travel is slowly starting to pick back up. Uh, in mid-June, many of the countries in Europe opened their borders for travel between EU members. And there's talk that on July 1st, which is tomorrow, uh, Europe's external borders might start to open up for select countries. Um, the list of non-EU countries that will be getting the green light to resume international travel and tourism won't officially come out till tomorrow, but the draft list has been released. And right now it contains 15 countries and the US is actually not on it, which means Americans are gonna to have to wait a little bit longer to travel to Europe. Uh, the list is gonna be reevaluated every 14 days, so it should we should get on there soon. Um, and then on the domestic end of things for Europe, life has started to reopen. Uh, children have been allowed to return to school in many countries, including Germany and France, Denmark, Belgium, and more. Uh, gyms, churches, sports leagues, Swimming pools, movie theaters, and even some concerts are starting to reopen with social distancing and reduced capacity, of course, um, in quite a few European countries. And then some of our services in Germany let us know recently that domestic travel in Germany is really starting to pick back up. So that means Germans traveling to different parts of Germany, and that includes local bus tours, too. So in short, the domestic life in Europe is really starting to look more positive and international travel is on the horizon. All right, so what can you do now? We all know that especially international travel um, has come to a complete halt during this pandemic. That makes it pretty hard for those of you in the travel business, especially you guys as agents, to do your jobs, right? So aside from processing cancellations and date changes, what can you be doing right now to help your business stay afloat? So my answer is in three parts. It's maintain, focus, and prepare. By maintain, I mean that if you've got a client base already, you need to make sure that those clients know that you're still in business and that you care about them. It's so important in general to keep a really open line of communication with your clients, but especially right now. And maybe some of you can relate to this, but people are pretty bored right now. So it would definitely be worth it to go through your client list and start calling people just to chat. Check in, see how they're doing, make sure that they're alive, make sure they're safe, especially with the rides going on recently. See if any of them were affected, see if their families were affected. And that just gives you an opportunity to get to know your clients better without trying to sell them something. And it will really mean a lot to people that you care about them enough to just check in and make sure that they're doing okay. And then depending on the conversation, it could also give you ideas about where your clients stand financially and if they're comfortable traveling and where they're comfortable traveling to. So for example, if somebody tells you they've been spending a lot of time with family lately, then you can ask them, do they have family close by or did they have to drive or fly to see them? If they flew, you can ask them, oh, what was your experience like in the airports right now? That must have been crazy. You know, try to guide the conversation. Be intentional with your questions, like in the example I just gave. But make sure you're not trying to offer them something unless they mention interest in actually going on a trip soon. And if you guys are doing this client interaction already, then great, keep doing it. If you did it once, like a couple of months ago, do it again because a lot has changed in the last couple of months. If you've never really just called your clients to chat, then do it. This is kind of a good excuse, like, hey, were you affected by the riots? You know, that'll really show them that you care. 
Um, cause as an agent, the best leads that you can get are repeat travelers because they already know you, they know you do good work and they know that you know that they're serious when they're calling you about a trip and that you're not going to waste your time doing research for them. So doing this client like check-in is going to go a long way towards developing those relationships and creating more repeat travelers. And then when you are talking to them, if your clients do mention interest in travel, make sure you're going them extra mile to offer them something that they actually want soon. And that's, this is not the time to be pushing international travel right now. You know, says the international tour operator, <laughs> that's just not the mood of the nation right now. We know that and we want you to know that so that you can be offering things that are going to make you money soon and keep you in business right now. In a few months, international travel might start to pick back up. And when that time comes, we hope that you'll let us guide you about when and how to start offering that again. But we're focused on right now for you because for some of you, it might be absolutely critical to start getting a stream of income starting to come in. So then that brings me to uh, step two in this coronavirus toolkit. After working on maintaining your current clients, you gotta focus. And by that I mean, create a focused and targeted short-term marketing plan and focus on getting your finances in order. So as I was just talking about, international travel is just not the thing to be offering right now. So you need to learn what is. And based on previous crises and based on the research I've been doing for you guys, we know that domestic travel is going to be the first thing that's going to return. Like I mentioned earlier, that's already starting to happen in Europe. It's happening in Germany. And um, I, I found this interesting tidbit, too, that Senator McSally in Arizona uh, recently introduced a proposal to create a tax credit incentivizing Americans to travel domestically. <laughs> so I don't know if that's going to go anywhere, but it definitely proves my point that domestic travel is on the horizon. So people are really anxious to get out of their houses. I'm sure a lot of you guys are too. I definitely am. We suggest that you become an expert on a few domestic destinations. If that's not normally your thing, just start learning about it. Because people are going to want to go somewhere, whether that's to a campground up north or a resort across the country or a U.S. landmark that they've never been to. Um, let them know that you know the best place for them to get away from their home safely and de-stress. People are going to want suggestions. Oh, no, we don't want that to happen. Okay. People are going to want suggestions. And uh, especially when there's so many terrifying things happening in the world right now, they're going to want to know what's safe. And so give them those suggestions. So you can help them make an informed and comfortable decision. And use those client conversations that I told you to have. If your clients are talking about places that they've been already or that they're thinking about going, make a note of those. Learn what your clients are interested in and comfortable with right now and then research those destinations so that you can offer or similar destinations so that you can offer like something similar to your other clients because odds are that your other clients are going to be comfortable with similar things right now. And then keep in mind too that we're going to have limited budgets going forward. Your clients are going to have limit, limited budgets because of the economic crash that's going on because of this lockdown. Uh, they're going to need guidance about how to spend their money so that they can maximize their vacation that they want to go on, but not break the bank. Give them that guidance and that's going to make you an ally to them so that when they, things start to rebound and they are comfortable going on those more expensive international trips, then you're going to be the person that they want to talk to you about it. And I've heard from quite a few of our partners that they've gotten a couple of calls starting to trickle in. So that's super promising to hear. And this is where one of those questions for you guys is coming in. I'd be really interested to know if you guys are having that same experience. So let Doug know in the chat and then Doug, let's read them off because I really want to know what's going on. The more that we know about the mood of the public, the better that we can be about giving advice to you guys. And you guys straight from the source are the best way to learn that. So. I'm going to pause a little bit, see if any of you want to check in about your calls. Not showing anything yet, Sophia. Just to reiterate, just jot any um, comments you may have in the chat box there. Okay. Well, um, I'll just go forward with uh, the next part of the plan and if people start to um, 
say, yeah, I've gotten a couple of calls start to come in or dang, no, I haven't. It's been dry as a bone. Um, then just let me know and sure, interrupt I'll me. In. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Um, so we were just talking a little bit about short-term marketing plan and how to target your business model towards offering things that correspond to the mood of the nation right now. Uh, but if your business is really hurting right now, then you're going to need a short-term financial plan too. So if you didn't have savings set aside for a crisis, the only thing that you can do right now financially is make your business as small as you can without damaging it. And that means if you've got to let employees move to part-time, you could do that. If you're spending money on marketing right now, maybe cut back on that. Um, we, that's what we've done. We've completely cut off our advertising for now. Um, because like I said, uh, people don't want to buy trips to Europe right now. They can't go to Europe right now. Um, so if you've got a brick and mortar store, consider moving it home for the immediate future until, um, you can get back on your feet again. Just find some way to reduce the expenditures that you've got for your business. And the best thing about the travel industry is that you don't have an inventory to worry about. That means you, you don't have to pay property taxes for your business. You don't have to pay fees to store your goods. Uh, your inventory is your brain. That means that you can be shaping your product to the mood of the public. You're not stuck with whatever's on the shelf. Right now, that mood is get me out of this house and get me somewhere domestic. So in summary, make a plan to reduce your expenditures and then focus on offering something that people want right now so that you can get an income starting to flow in. So then we were talking about some things that you can do now to help get out of the red, but what should you do next? And that brings us to the prepare part of this three-step plan. Uh, thinking ahead is a key factor in a successful business. The president of our small family-owned company, Mike, you know, told, him, told you about him in the uh, background info. We talked about some strategies that we've been using to keep us afloat right now. We haven't had to lay anyone off so far, and that's huge. We're a small company, and we haven't had any business like you guys this whole year so far. So um, Mike said that the golden rule of a profitable business is to spend less than you make. Put less money out in the world than you take in. Sounds pretty simple, right? Well, unfortunately, it's not as common of a practice as you might think. Um, a lot of people, business owners and individuals alike, tend to spend everything that they make. They're like, it's payday, where can I go out to dinner, you know? And some even spend more than they make, which results in credit card debt or um, big loans. So in order to prepare for your future, you've really got to make getting out of debt and saving money your number one priority. And even if your business isn't in debt or if you don't own the company and you're just an employee, Making sure that you have your personal finances taken care of as well is something that's really important because uh, if something goes wrong, then you'll be able to survive the storm. Secondly, uh, have you ever heard the phrase, pay yourself first? Um, I just learned that a couple of years ago. And it's a personal strategy that can go a long way towards the overall financial health of your business and your wallet. And this phrase means that the first thing that you should do with your paycheck before you pay the bills, before you buy groceries, before date night, it's to pay yourself. And that doesn't mean buying yourself like a gift for the hard work that you put in this week. That means setting aside a certain amount of money every single paycheck to put into a savings account. Um, Mike suggests saving between 20 and 30% of what you make for crisis planning. But if you need to start smaller and work up to that, do that but start somewhere. Saving money takes a lot of discipline, but it could literally save your business in a crisis like this. I actually do this myself. I put about 14% of my paycheck into, e into my savings account for emergencies, and I've been doing that for the last year, and then the rest of it I put uh, towards my student loans. So the economy, it goes through phases. That's just how it works. That's just how life works. Um, I'm sure a lot of you know this, that things are good for a while and then life hits you with something like your car breaking down or your roof leaking or an expensive surgery comes up. And that's exactly how the economy is too. We'll go for a few years with a really healthy economy and then something will happen like coronavirus or a war or a stock market crash or an industry failure and the economy is going to stink for a while. And the key to making it through something like that is to plan ahead, knowing that the economy is going to suck at some point in the future and planning for when that happens so that you have a safety net for while you ride out the crash and wait for the economy to pick back up again. So for this is this is question number two. 
Um, for those of you that did do this, if you did prepare, um, what did you do and what do you do on a regular basis to help you save and how has it helped you during this situation? Um, so I'll give it a second and if nobody is wanting to share, then I'll move on. <laughs> Let me okay, know, Doug. So if you're having trouble with the chat feature, you can also respond in the question box. Um, we did have a couple people respond to your last question indicating that there are a few phone calls coming in for travel in 21 and 22. Okay, okay, that's good. So that's encouraging. That is very encouraging, I'm glad to hear that. Um, okay, well, um, again, let me know at the end if people are start or like let interrupt me if people are starting to talk about what they've done to prepare. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and move on a little bit. Okay, actually, so, I will. Let me just jump in because we are getting a couple comments here. Um, somebody okay. else is saying they haven't had any new bookings yet. Um, okay. Other people are agreeing with you. Save 20% of your income and cut expenses when necessary. Uh, same as you. Save okay. for the future. Don't overspend. And somebody else mm -hmm. moved to a smaller office, reduced their staffed hours, and stopped print advertising. So those are okay. a few of the things people are doing. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for sharing because, I mean, that's why we're doing this webinar today is so that we can help you guys and hearing it from your peers is, is the best way to, you know, know what works. So um, then I'm going to move on. And definitely if you if more things start to come in, just let me know, Doug. Absolutely. But for those of you that – oh, were you going to say something? <laughs> just saying absolutely. Okay. I'll let you know. Okay, cool. Um, for those of you that didn't prepare, um, this is a cycle. Keep this in the back of your head always. Know that the economy is going to tank again in the future. It's it's not going to be uh, hunky dory for the next hundred years that we're uh, around. So <laughs> prepare to survive it when that happens, so that you won't have to make your business smaller because you won't have any debt to worry about, and you'll have savings that you can rely on until the economy gets better. So using these three steps that I just gave you, maintain those clients that you've got, focus on offering something that clients want right now to get them cash flowing again, and then prepare, prepare, prepare for another crisis because it's going to happen again. So then I've got one more thing for you guys if my screen wants to move forward. Oh, there we go. Okay. So uh, we talked about thinking ahead as far as crisis planning goes, but you should also be starting to think about what happens when you can offer those semi-international like Hawaii, Alaska, Puerto Rico, and those international destinations again when this whole thing ends. When travel is starting to normalize again, how should you go about it? And I want to say that Europe is an incredibly resilient market for Americans. Year after year, Europe is consistently in the top five places in the world that Americans want to visit. And that's why our focus is Europe. People want to go there, it sells. And it's more expensive than like a cruise or a Caribbean getaway, which means that you're making more money for each trip that you book. So once these coronavirus fears start to fade, focus on offering things that are going to make you the most commission for your effort. You're probably still going to be on a tight budget for a while. So it'll be important to work with operators who are going to make attracting clients easy for you. We actually have multiple programs that can help pay you for your marketing investments and give you a partner who's really willing to go that extra mile for you. So like I said, today, probably not the best time to be marketing Europe. Um, but <laughs> we want to help you make it through this right now so that in the future, um, we would love to be able to help make getting Europe bookings easier for you. So let me know if you are interested in becoming our partner, and we'll let you know when we recommend offering Europe again, and uh, we'll provide you with any and all expertise that we can. So if you're interested in talking about a partnership, my contact information is listed here, 800-968-9161. Uh, my extension is 2223, or you can email me, sophia at imagetours.com. So uh, I'll leave that up for just a sec, but that's all I got for you today. So I hope that you can use some of the tips that I gave you and let me know how they work for you. Um, you know, my email's right there. Shoot me an email. Hey, I talked to my clients and it was great, you know. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to open it up for some questions. All right. Great. Thanks, Sophia. Very informative. Um, I think in, in keeping with what you were saying, I think communication really is going to be the key. 
Um, <clears throat> we who work in the travel industry, we're inundated daily with information about new openings, new resort openings, what countries are opening, what countries aren't. And we need to be uh, uh, passing that information along to our clients because they are not getting the, uh, you know, the constant information that we're getting. So I think mm -hmm. that's very important. I agree with you on that. Um, okay, let me check questions here. Uh, just a couple comments, great tips, thank you so much. Another thank you. Um, also just a reminder that this webinar is being recorded. It will be available at uh, jacksfax.com backslash webinars within the next couple days in case you need to go back and refer to any of these tips that Sophia has given to us. And we have another thank you for the useful tips. I'm glad you guys like them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Well, I guess that is going to okay. wrap things up for today. Sophia, thank you very much again. And travel professionals, thank you for taking the time to join us. Uh, please stay tuned for future training sessions. That will wrap okay, things okay. up for today. Thank you all. Thanks, Doug. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>